Namaste to all of you. The subject for today is where do our thoughts come from? It's a sequel to my earlier video which I had spoken on what are thoughts? And now I would like to tell you something which is a difficult question to answer. Where do our thoughts come from? Especially when neither science nor spiritualism is comfortable in answering such a question. Where do thoughts come from? Because on one side, our philosophers, great philosophers, ancient philosophers, proclaimed that we are thoughts, we are what we think. Whereas, after being devoted and dedicated to this subject of spiritualism, I understood that we are not thoughts. It is because you are, therefore you think. If you are not there, thoughts are not there. Meaning you, you cannot be thoughts. When you can know, read your own thoughts, your own mind, when you can communicate, direct your thoughts to a direction that you wish to, even though if it's for a small period of time, yes, you can direct your thoughts. So how can you be you? You can't. And neither will you ever say that you are thoughts. You'll never say that. You'll never say that you are mind. Whereas you'll always express yourself as my thoughts, my mind, meaning it's yours. It's an instrument of yours to use. Your mind is an instrument, but you are being used by it through its thoughts. And as per the second law of thermodynamics, energy, like it is said by spiritualism, as well as science, that all that exists in this universe is nothing but energy. And energy is defined as the ability or the capacity to do work. So thought is a psychic energy. And as for second law of thermodynamics, I was about to say that energy moves in entropy, in disorder. Recklessly, like the way thoughts do. Randomly and recklessly. Like the way our thoughts multitask. They are repetitive and uncontrollable. That is why mind is uncontrollable. Thoughts are uncontrollable. It's very difficult to control your thoughts. Impossible. In fact, the subject of spiritualism revolves around who you are. And that who you are, we can come to know only when we silence our thoughts through meditation or meditative awareness or whatever. Until and unless we still the mind, until and unless we silence our thoughts, we do not come to know or we do not awaken our real self. Thoughts are the false self. It's your personality, not your individuality. It's your persona, like in Greek it is said, persona is a false mask. That is a false mask which is ruling over you, your body and mind, ruling over you through its desires and emotions. Your desires, your emotions, it is that 
that false self of me and mine for myself and selfishness for the sake of self preservation thoughts thoughts are repetitive thoughts are negative like as the foundation of science says that 80% of the thoughts are negative and i would say thoughts are also the cause of all your problems the moment a problem comes it is thoughts which create that agitation that conflict that anxiety that depression by thinking on that subject again and again and again so thoughts are the cause of all your problems they aggravate whatever is bothering you so they become the main cause now thoughts actually what is it before i come to explain to you the source of our thoughts it is very important that we should know first what is thoughts thoughts are cognitive perceptions ideas beliefs emerging from a mind flowing in electromagnetic uh, through chemical activity in the brain it's a field of energy thoughts are a field of electromagnetic energy now a field of energy like light is a field of energy of the force and the power of the sun both energy but here we had this power and then we had the field circling it like the light so force and field now thoughts are a field of energy so once we come to know once we come to know which is that force which ignites its field its radiate its field illuminates its field of energy will come to the source like the source of light is the sun throughout the world and thoughts like i said they are a perception ideas and beliefs of this world of this world so thoughts again are of two types after having a force and field there of two types on one side we have choiceless thoughts choiceless because the mind cannot function in non duality it has to function in duality between this and that it has to make a choice for its likes and dislikes divine and the devil truth and lie good and bad positive and negative hot and cold everything it's it's in dichotomy mind functions in dichotomy in opposites so choiceless thoughts means it's non dual there is no choice because in order to make a choice for the intellect to make a choice it has to segregate it has to separate the totality the wholesomeness of the energy into two into two and our ancient sages said in advait vedanta advait means not to vedanta means end of vedas that there is no such thing as two all that exists is nothingness in its absoluteness from which all subset energies appear and dis- disappear whether it's nuclear energy or whether it's psychic energy in the form of thoughts they all appear and disappear okay appearance we can understand the thoughts have appeared from its source which i yet to tell you what is the source so it appears but where does it disappear back into the nothingness of the universe into the absoluteness of the universe which from which all sorts of subset energies chemical energy nuclear energy electrical energy psychic energy magnetic energy you know been all sorts of energies they appear the subset energies are interchangeable between each other and 
the absolute energy is that ultimate eternal infinite limitless energy it's absolute so in all the abilities of this energy there is one supreme ability which our sages told us and that is aware conscious energy that is what who we are aware conscious energy awareness first consciousness second the nesss the suffix in awareness or consciousness is clarifies the intensity of any individual energy of awareness and consciousness is the conscious principle the conscious principle which differs a living from a non living a rock will not be conscious whereas a living creature the intensity may differ the plants are aware and conscious the animals are aware and conscious and we have the highest intensity and the potentiality that is why the sages claimed that art thou aham brahmasmi shivoham you are that divine that insight within you but aware energy within you is that absolute aware energy which spontaneously comes out through the soul it is settled in the soul the super conscious section of the mind and it comes out through the soul when the mind is silent the soul awakens or when the mind is excessively doing something there is a warning from this aware energy if you are eating too much there will be a warning if you are drinking say alcohol too much once you exceed a certain limit it will tell you stop it anything which you should not be doing this aware energy guides you and its wholesomeness as a witnesser it is also called the witnesser in pure consciousness and purity where there is no separation it's simply witnessing since mind cannot be controlled it the soul checks and guides the mind checks and guides the mind so the choiceless thoughts in our mind are when the mind is alert it becomes aware and spontaneously in the presence of now in the presence of now choiceless choiceless awareness is always in the presence of now from one moment to the next existentially it's called meditative awareness or mindfulness it is nothing but the soul is awakened and the mind is silent the divine within awakens the divine within awakens and it happens only in split seconds scientists will be able to explain to you in the best manner about what i am speaking of choiceless thoughts that he had been working say on a certain formula for years and one final day spontaneously bingo i've got it i've got it eureka so it comes in spontaneity in the presence of now not out of mental calculations or analysis or evaluation or whatever that's all capturing the past information capturing the past knowledge into that so choiceless awareness may be hardly 0.5% or whatever i'm just guessing the remaining as per neuroscientist over 98% our mind is functioning in the subconscious level from past awareness not from the presence of now not in the presence of now from past awareness so the thoughts now are choiceful choiceful meaning with every thought there is a choice of granted to you which is not granted to say animals or plants you can choose between this and that in the maximum level you have the power of choice in the highest manner to choose 
joyful thoughts. It comes through the memory, the mind extracts from the memory its past information. So over 98% of the thoughts are from the past. It extracts, sends it, sends this information. You see, thoughts are actually carriers of information through neurons, through meaning through neural cells, and sends it to the intellect, which reasons, evaluates, analyzes, decides what to do, what not to do, and determines, judges. So, over 98 percent, that is the mind subconsciously in choice full thoughts full of choices and the remaining small portion here it is segregated into duality whereas in the functioning in of the soul or the role of the soul it is choiceless thoughtless or choiceless it simply observes and witnesses simply observes and witnesses. So that is how it is. So thoughts by and large they appear and disappear. Like all subset energies appear and disappear. Disappear into, like I said earlier, back into the absolute non-dual shunya, that is nothingness of this universe. We go back into it. Whether it's every energy, whether it's physical energy, the matter, whether it's conscious energy, the consciousness and every other energy goes back into the absolute energy of which the supreme ability is aware energy. So when the mind is alert it becomes aware and after that if the mind is attentive it becomes conscious and from the conscious it goes into the subconscious level and the consciousness goes to sleep when the mind is in deep sleep. It goes to sleep. But the moment you wake up, the moment you wake up, you know everything around. You don't have to be conscious about it. Meaning awareness does not sleep. It's the conscious energy which goes to sleep. The aware energy is the ultimate energy. That is why we are the ultimate who you are. You are that aware energy through which you come to know. You discover the universe, you discover the world, you discover from the macrocosm to the microcosm, from the planets to the subatomic particles and atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons, everything. And basically who you are, just waves of energy. That is why science says every atom is 99.99999% empty space because these are just waves, electrons, waves of energy. So, thoughts, as now I have told you quite a lot about it, and the source also I have tried to explain that the source is who you are. The source is who you are. And to sum it up, Thoughts are the quantum of what you are. Thoughts are the content of what you are. It's the quantity in your mind of what you are because it consumes over 98%. But who you are is more or less asleep all the time. That is why the word is used awakening. Awakening of the soul. But activation of the mind, the mind gets activated, the soul simply awakens. Who you are is asleep most of the time. Not that Mr. and Miss or Mrs. So and So, sorry. That female and the male, the names given, these are all given by others. All the information that you have in your intellect and your memory is borrowed knowledge from the others, from the media, from the internet, etc., etc. It's not, it's, it's your, you become an intellectual out of that, you become a scholar out of that. But 
you understand that information through your intelligence and intelligence is that aware energy through its instinct and through its intuition in spontaneity in spontaneity so intelligence is your aware energy and intellect through which you become a scholar out of that 98 person for which you are so proud of in your personality that this is what i am in quantity not realizing that it is not who you are so the source and the subject and the context of who you are is aware energy it exclusively deal this is dealt exclusively in the vedas and in the first mahavakya it says prajnanam prajnanam means insight that intelligence is brahma is that creator and the creator and the creation are the same it's not two so thoughts please remember is always of the parts and it is a flow of electromagnetic energy emerging from chemical activity in the brain they are the carriers of information here and there and the source is not that the source is who you are in awareness thank you very much